الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد. Continuing on our study, uh, basic fit. Uh, speaking with regards to the wudu, we mentioned some hadith of uh, tahara. Uh, first, we should talk about some of the merits of uh, wudu. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Almighty says, Oh, you believe, uh, when you perform salat, wash your faces and your arms to the elbows, wipe your heads and wash your feet up to the ankles. And we already mentioned the importance of being thorough with regards to tahara. And as the Prophet Sallallahu said, Wailu the Aqab in the Nar, you know, woe to the ankles uh, from the fire, you know, as a stern warning to be complete with regards to your tahara and your purification and your wudu. Uh, wudu is a condition for the validity of prayers, as we've already mentioned. The Prophet Sallallahu said, La Yaqbalawaw Salati Ahadikumida Ahdata Hatiyatha Wadu. Allah does not accept the prayer of any one of you who has the ritual impurities until he makes uh, purification, until he makes wudu. Also the Prophet ﷺ said, no prayer is accepted without purification and no charity is accepted from earnings made from impermissible sources. And this is uh, in Muslim, Sahih Muslim. The Prophet ﷺ also said, when a Muslim or a believer washes his face while performing wudu, every sin that he committed uh, is washed away with water or with the last drop of water. When he washes his hands, every sin that his hands committed washes away with water, or with the last drop of water. When he washes his feet, every sin that his feet committed washes away with water, or with the last drop of water, until he emerges pure and sin-free. Ru'ahu Muslims. This shows us the fawa'id, the fada'id, or the fadl of making wudu. This is the merit and the blessing and the greatness of making wudu and making wudu properly is that it expiates our sins. So this is a good reminder for, for us. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said, uh, whoever performs wudu as he is ordered uh, and performs prayer as he is ordered, his past sins will be uh, removed, will be expi expiated. Ru'ahu Bukhari. So this shows us that again, proper wudu, it expiate sins and the ulama mentioned that this expiates the minor sins not the major sins so so for example if someone has committed a zina or they have done some other uh, major sin that just making wudu is not going to uh, expiate that sin but rather the minor sins that we do the prophet sallallahu alaihi wa sallam said if a slave makes wudu and then goes to the masjid and performs prayer therein he is a guest of Allah, and it is a right upon the host to honor his guest. Ruahu uh, Behaki. And the Prophet ﷺ said, the key to prayer is wudu. Al Miftah, Al Miftah al Salat, Al Wudu. Or Al Wudu, Al Miftah al Salat. That the wudu is a key, is the key to prayer. So it lets us know it's a shaft, it's a condition for proper prayer that we have to have wudu, we have to have wudu. Uh, how to perform the wudu? Here's a general description and then we'll get into uh, a very important hadith regarding this. The general description of how to perform wudu is found in the words of Allah Azza wa Jal. O you who believe when you intend to offer a salat, wash your faces and your hands uh, up to the elbows. Rub by passing wet hands over your heads and wash your feet up to the ankles. So the steps in the ayat are mentioned as follows. Uh, first is the intention. And we already mentioned the hadith of intention. In the ma'amal of the niyad, very actions are tied to the intention. So we have to have intention. Uh, it is to be thought in the mind only and not uttered on, on the tongue, as we mentioned. Uh, the Prophet wasallam said, in the ma'amal of the niyad, deeds are uh, considered by intentions. Uh, and then the basmala. The second thing is the basmala. When we make the wudu, the Prophet Sallallahu said, and this is in Ibn Majah, uh, uh, the authenticity of this hadith is uh, questionable, but, or some of the other hadith uh, regarding the basmala, but anyhow, it is uh, considered, uh, you know, a sunnah and, and even wajib to make the uh, you know, uh, and the hadith goes this, no wudu is valid without pronouncing the name of Allah. And this is Wahu Ibn Majah. The third 
uh, action of wudu is washing the hands three times. So washing the hands three times. And this is a, uh, here, this is the full washing. This means uh, there's the sunnah washing of just the hands in the beginning. But this is washing the hands up to the elbows. And this is what is mentioned in the ayat. And then the fourth uh, thing, uh, fourth uh, part of uh, the wudu is gargling and sniffling water at the same time three times. Okay, this is wudu, and this is in accordance with sunnah. You can do it one time, but it's sunnah, meaning it's better, and you'll re receive more reward by doing it three times. So that means to this is. Uh, this is to, you know, take in water and, uh, take in water and in, in the nose and the mouth at the same time. Also, washing the face three times. This is also sunnah, to wash it three times. It would be sufficient to wash it once. Then washing the arms up to the elbow three times, beginning with the right. Washing from the from the uh, up to the up, up to the elbows, fingertips, you know, make sure water touch all of those places three times. And again, we don't have to be wasteful of the water. And this is something we witness day and night around the world, a wastefulness with water, except in those places where they already know the blessing of water because they don't have much water. They have to make it in a from a bucket, they have to make it from a river, they have to make it from whatever. So uh, we should strive our best not to be wasteful with the water and not just let the tap flow and just keep flowing and f flowing full bla blast. Then wiping the head with wet hands, then wiping, and this is complete, and then wiping the inside of the ears with the forefingers and their backs with the thumbs. And this is once. Washing the feet, including the ankles, three times, beginning with the right foot. And then saying, this is for a complete wudu, saying the testimony of faith. Uh, this is upon the completion of the wudu. So that is how we make the wudu. And one should keep in mind that the wudu is the same for men and women. And some of the preconditions, some of the things that we must be in place before uh, making wudu, of course, which I think is, is well known, is first uh, that wudu is for the person who is entered the fold of Islam. They must be Muslim. This is a pre precondition. So wudu is not accepted from a non-Muslim, obviously. It does not, uh, they are not rewarded for it, and it does not uh, make valid what it makes valid for the Muslim meaning the Salat and other actions. Uh, secondly is uh, being sane. And so wudu is not valid from an insane person or a person who has lost their mind, whether it be uh, temporarily. So the wudu, and actually this would break uh, a person if they lost, if they had wudu and then they uh, lost consciousness, like complete consciousness. Uh, or they lost their sanity, then they would be required to make a new wudu when they gain consciousness or uh, s sanity. The Prophet said, Rufiya Aklam an Talatha, the pin is lifted on three, uh, and one of them is the uh, you know, the, the person who has not reached puberty. Uh, the one who has lost consciousness until they gain consciousness and the I've forgotten the third one but that lets us know that you know that they're not held accountable for that that state and that's that state that they're in but at the same time their wudu is not is no longer valid uh, also, which is also here, that uh, the age of discretion, as we said, the puberty, that the person, the wudu is not valid from a young child who's not reached the age of puberty or cannot intend an action independently. So a young baby, a young child 
who isn't uh, uh, responsible for Ibada yet. And the fifth thing is substances, a uh, precondition is that substances that prevent the water from reaching the parts of wudu, uh, they should be removed. So this is also a precondition. You need a person should remove, uh, a woman should remove uh, nail polish, or if a person has a lot of dirt and mud on them, they should remove that, or dough, or wax, or whatever prevents the water from touching the skin and the limbs. Those are just some of the uh, merits and some of the preconditions of wudu, and the next time we will talk about the obligatory actions of wudu, and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.